This is Mohamed Zaber at the University of Alberta, Canada, who has a presentation called Development of Chicken Feathers Derived Novel Adsorbent for the Removal of Heavy Metals from Contaminated Water. everyone. I want to start my presentation with the famous quotation of Benjamin Franklin. Once he said, when the well is dry, then we will know the worth of water. He was absolutely right. According to World Health Organization, 2.1 billion people don't have access to clean drinking water. And 1.2 million people die every year due to unsafe drinking water. Although we are living in an industrialized world, but the amount of wastewater produced from industrial and agriculture sector is about 1,500 cubic kilometers, which is six times more water than available in our rivers of our planet. If we just talk about heavy metal contamination, alone arsenic has nearly affected 170 million people in 70 countries of our globe. Also, the existing technologies are either expensive environmentally harmful and have low adsorption capacity. So we need a solution that should be cheaper, environmentally friendly, and can be implemented on a larger scale. Here comes my research project to decontaminate the heavy metal containing water using chicken feathers. Now you may be curious to know why specifically the chicken feathers. Chicken feathers are the poultry byproduct Every year, hundreds of millions of tons of chicken feathers are produced around the globe, which are either landfill or burned and creates environmental pollution. However, we can use them for a productive purposes such as development of absorbent for water purification. Now comes the question, how we can develop this absorbent using chicken feathers? The process is simple and pretty straightforward. And to answer this question, we need to understand the basic chemistry of the chicken feathers. Chicken feathers have mainly keratin proteins, which are consist of disulfide linkage. By breaking these crosslinks, we can increase the surface affinity of the chicken feathers by introducing nanoparticles such as graphene oxide, so that they can easily capture or essentially stick to a variety of toxic contaminants, including heavy metals. To develop this adsorbent, we took chicken feathers, washed, oven dried, and then ground. Then these ground chicken feathers were dissolved using reducing agents. These dissolved chicken feathers were further chemically treated with the water dispersed graphene oxide to obtain the keratin graphene oxide mixture. This mixture was further subjected to dialysis and drying to get the adsorbent. After the successful synthesis of the adsorbent, we characterize this adsorbent using different techniques such as Fourier transfer infrared spectroscopy. This graph shows, the, shows that the OS stretching region as well as amide one, amide two and amide three region of the adsorbent, the intensity has been increased and shows the presence of physical interaction between keratin protein of the chicken feathers and graphene oxide. This claim was further corroborated using XRD analysis. XRD analysis was basically used to see the crystallinity changes in the pattern of the chicken feathers after incorporation of graphene oxide. So after the introducing graphene oxide into the chicken feathers, the peaks are either reduced are disappeared. Also, the new crystallinity peaks are appeared that shows the presence of interaction of physical interaction between chicken feathers and the graphene oxide. Furthermore, scanning electron microscopy was performed to see the morphological changes in the chicken feathers after introducing graphene oxide. Chicken feathers have long shafts and smooth surface. However, after introducing graphene oxide, its surface turned into rough and shiny patches were observed due to the presence of the graphene oxide. Furthermore, these adsorbent were tested by using synthetic wastewater prepared in the lab with the help of ICPMS. I'm pleased to say that we already did experiment for a proof of concept 
and currently working on the development of technology at a larger scale. And our study has three outcomes. Firstly, only uh, these heavy metals can be removed from 80 to 99% by using this adsorbent. And our adsorbent have maximum absorption capacity towards arsenic and selenium. Secondly, one kg of the adsorbent can remove the heavy metals in the 10,000 liters of wastewater. Lastly, and most importantly, our adsorbent have good adsorption capacity as compared to the existing technologies, as well as it is environmentally benign. At the end, I would like to say, with the development of this adsorbent, we can remove the potential health and environmental impacts even before their risk of occurrence. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. That's a very interesting approach. Uh, I like your approach. Uh, there's a question. I, I have several questions, but here's the question that I will ask you. Do you think it's possible to recover the metals from the adsorbent? I would yeah. suspect. Please go ahead. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, there is a possibility to recover the metals, and we are uh, already planned to recover these metals. And if we recover these metals in a large quantity, of course, then we can sell these uh, metals to the metal industries. Thank you. Judges, do you have a question for Mohammed? Please speak up. Yes. Uh, do you want me to start, Scott? Yes. Yes. That would be great, Dennis. I have two questions. Uh, Mohamed, thank you for the nice presentation. What's about uh, food uh, compatibility of uh, graphene oxide? Is it food grade material or, or not? Well, uh, there are some of the studies, uh, they are saying uh, it's uh, safe. But however, some of the scientists, they said it's, uh, uh, it's unsafe for the food. However, in our case, because our graphene oxide is the chemically uh, linked with the, with the adsorbent, so there are no uh, possibility to, uh, uh, to transfer of the graphene oxide from the chicken feather into the water. So it's safe in, in case of uh, water, uh, we can use it for water purification purposes. My second question was about uh, what you explained. Don't we see leaks of this uh, graphene oxide in the, in the media, you know, after usage, cubic meters after cubic meters, can we leak and, and, and go through environment, um, this, uh, this product? No, this, uh, this graphene oxide is basically uh, 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 linked with the, graph, uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with the proteins. So I don't think so there is any possibility to, uh, to, uh, to the transfer of uh, graphene oxide from the chicken feather into the water. And also, uh, we are using only very small quantity of uh, uh, graphene oxide. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just 1% or 2 or 3%, not more than that. Yeah. Okay. And my last question is about the price. Do you have an idea, uh, rough estimate of the treatment costs for, I don't know, one cubic meter, one gallon of water or whatever? Do you have an idea of these costs? So uh, uh, yet we haven't do the cost analysis, but uh, we are expecting that because our uh, raw material is uh, is is the uh, uh, is the waste. So we don't have any like the cost as such for the raw material. So we are hoping that that would be uh, 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 cheap cheaper than the existing technologies. Thank you, Dennis. Our do our other judges have any questions? Yes, thank you for the great presentation. Uh, I have two questions. The first question is, uh, may I know what uh, parameters affect on the uh, removal efficiency of the metals? Okay, well, uh, yeah, uh, we actually worked on uh, two parameters. The first one is the pH and the temperature. So there are other factors such as uh, uh, adsorbent uh, amount are also play important role. Okay, so so at the what uh, pH, uh, what is the optimum pH or temperature uh, to get the uh, maximum removal efficiency? 
So uh, uh, we determine between six to seven pH because we uh, we are also also planning to use uh, that one. Uh, for the drinking water purposes too. So what we are doing is if we are taking like the wastewater, we, we change its pH, we can increase or decrease. So we are using like between six to seven pH, whatever the result I showed is uh, between six to seven pH. Okay, thank you. So my last question is, uh, what's your opinion on the major challenge for scale, uh, scaling up this technology? Um, because uh, I'm using the bio-based sorbent, so the existing technologies are mostly used the petroleum-based. So uh, I would say uh, uh, I I need to uh, when uh, I'm going for the larger scale. So I need to consider that because it's a bio-based, while others are mostly petroleum-based uh, products they are using. So that's the technology uh, uh, barrier for to to develop this uh, technology at industrial scale. Thank you. Professor Wu, do you have any questions? No, I just have a, a, a small question. I think, Mohammed, you did an excellent job in presenting your research. I really enjoy your presentation. So my question to you is, you know, you mentioned about the cost of a feather is very cheap. I wonder about the cost of extracting the keratin from a feather. And how that might, you know, uh, affect the overall cost of your technology? Thank you. Yeah, so uh, we, we haven't done yet the cost analysis, but for the chicken feathers, because chicken feathers are mainly consist of keratin proteins uh, up to 94%. So we are just extracting lipids from that and the rest of material we are using for oh, the thank you. absorbent. Well, thank you very much, Mohammed, and thank you to our judges. Uh, we'll now transition to our next presenter.